Hello again. So in this video we'll talk about sheaves and injectivity, surjectivity and exactness of morphisms of sheaves. So let's start with the definition of exactness. So let's take an abelian category. You can just think of abelian groups or uh, modules or sheaves of abelian groups and stuff like this, so you don't need to think in this fancy category theory uh, language, but just think of abelian groups or modules. Okay, and let's take a sequence of morphisms, so this would be something like um, homomorphisms of abelian groups or R-module homomorphisms or stuff like this. Okay, and so we have this um, this sequence of morphisms and the sequence is called exact if we have the following So it's called an exact sequence if, um, so if just the image of some fi minus 1 is the kernel of fi. And this, of course, should hold for all integers. <clears throat> okay, um, also note that we have f i minus 1 composed with, um, wait, let me see, uh, so the other way round. So at first we apply f i minus 1, then we apply f i, and this is 0. So as a small aside, um, let's give some examples of some exact sequences. So let's take, um, always always uh, think of abelian groups or R modules or something. So let's take this exact sequence. So um, sometimes we uh, make it shorter so it doesn't have to be of integer length, but it's just, it can be shorter. Okay, um, so if this is exact, then we have that f is injective, and in fact it's equivalent. So you can check that, it's not hard to check. So this means just that the kernel of f, so here we have the kernel, and the image of zero is zero, so this means that the kernel is zero, so that's equivalent to injectivity. And now let's look at another sequence. And this is exact if and only if g, uh, oops, sorry, g is at the wrong place. If g is subjective. So <clears throat> let's see. We want that the kernel of the kernel of this map G. Wait, let me see. The image of the map G here is equal to the kernel of this map, and the kernel of this map is just all of C. So this means that it's subjective. And another example would be uh, what we call a short exact sequence. So this is a short exact sequence. So just that you know, um, so which I'll sometimes abbreviate like this, just that you know what I mean when I talk of short exact sequences. Okay, um, now. Let's take, let's make another definition. So 
an additive functor so from an abelian category to another abelian category is exact if it maps short exact sequences to short exact sequences. Two short exact sequences. So to write it out, we have zero A B C zero, and then we get f of zero, but f of zero is uh, zero by additivity of the functor. So we have zero f of a, f of b, f of c, and again zero. And of course, we always get the sequence, but the important part is that the sequence is exact. Okay, um, now let's go back to sheaves. And let's start with the following lemma. I claim that taking stocks preserves injectivity. So what I mean by this is if we have injectivity um, of, um, so we have phi from f to g morphism of sheaves with phi u from f of u to g of u injective for all u and x open then we get that phi x is injective for all x and x so the induced maps at the stocks um, we won't prove this but we'll use it in the next lemma. So yeah. let's see. And this I claim that we basically have both. So we have a morphism of pre-sheaves. Well, actually, probably that also holds for morphisms of pre-sheaves. I'm not exactly sure. Better check it, but it should be. Okay. Um, so we have a morphism of pre-sheaves where f is a sheaf. And I claim that phi u is injective, so just as phi u from above for all open sets u, if and only if phi x, so the induced map, is injective for all x and x. Okay, so the proof, um, well, one direction is just this, so that's the lemma from above. Now let's prove the other direction. So we have this diagram f of u, we have to map phi u to g of u. We have this map if into the product of the stalks. And this map is injective um, because f is a sheaf. So we've proven that for sheaf f, this map is injective. And here we have the product of the induced maps on the stalks. And as all these induced maps are injective by assumption, and this is injective, also the composition of these maps is injective, and then also phi u is injective. So we have injectivity here, we have injectivity here, and then we get that phi u is injective. And as u was arbitrary, we are done. Okay, um, now let's go on. 
we have another definition, namely, um, let's take another morphism of sheaves. So in the following, we we'll always talk about morphisms of sheaves. So if I write phi or something, it will be a morphism of sheaves. And now we define a new pre-sheaf, namely the kernel of phi, which we get by an open set u gets mapped to the set which we call. So that's just, we haven't defined that yet, what it is. And that's the kernel of the map phi u, where again phi u goes from f of u to g of u. Okay, um, now let's prove that this pre-sheaf is in fact a sheaf. So therefore we cover an open set, oops, we cover an open set u by, op by other open sets, so we have an open cover. And we just proved the second sheaf axiom. The first is immediate, so you can check that on your own if you want, but it's really immediate, so let's just prove the second one. Let's take fi in the kernel of phi of ui. So for i we have these fi. And of course, they should agree on the intersections. So that's what we have here. And now we want to glue them together. Okay, um, first note that these fi's are also in f. So f is a sheath, so we can glue them in f. So in F, I mean capital F, the sheath, capital F. So we can glue them to get some F in F of U with, when we restrict to UI, we get the FI, of course, for all I and I. But that's not enough. What we need is that f is in the kernel. So let's see. So we have this phi u of f and we want to show that it's zero. How do we do this? Well, we have commutativity, so either if you think of this diagram or you can just, so what I mean by this diagram is this diagram when we have uh, morphisms of sheaves or you can also just uh, think about it in terms of the formulas. So we have phi ui of f restricted to ui is zero because f restricted to ui is fi and fi is in the kernel, so that's zero. But that's also phi u of f restricted to ui. So this is an element in g, and we should restrict it um, to ui. Okay, but now g is also a sheath, and we have that the image of this phi u of f, so, or rather the restriction of the phi u of f to some u i is always zero. So this means also that phi u of f is zero, which means that f is in the kernel. So in the kernel of u. Okay, so that's good. So we have this sheath. And now let's define 
injectivity. So we call a morphism of sheaves phi injective if the kernel of phi is zero, which is equivalent to the following, namely that this that for all open sets u, phi u is injective, so that's just a reformulation. And by the lemma, by the previous lemma, that's equivalent to the fact that all the induced maps at the level of stocks are injective. Good, so we have that, and now let's look at surjectivity. Now it gets a little bit more delicate. So also let me remind you that also we've seen, we haven't proved it, but bijectivity can also be checked at the level of sections. So if for all sections it's bijective, so we could, so this equivalent we, here, we could replace injective by bijective, but for, um, Search activity, that's not true. We'll see an example of this later. Okay, but first let's define the image of a morphism of sheaves. So as always, phi is a morphism of sheaves. And now we need sheafification. Um, of the following pre-sheaf, namely, well, it's exactly what you would expect it to be. We map u to phi u of u. So um, this is a subset of g of u. So yeah, so. Um, that's, uh, sorry, not phi u of u, phi u of f of u, of course. So, phi u. All right. Okay. Um, now let's prove a first lemma. Namely, if we have um, the morphism of sheaves from f to g, also here phi is from f to g, we get an injective morphism, and indeed, uh, in fact, it's also unique from the image into g. Let's prove it. So let's take the pre sheaf we already considered above. U maps to phi u of f of u. And what we have is the following. So we have this, so we have the sheaf f. Then we can factor it into H and then we go into G. So we somehow factor it into the image, but this H is no sheath. But now we have from H the map to the sheathification of H. So maybe let me write it so that you know what I mean. And now by the universal property of the sheafification, there exists a unique uh, morphism and unique morphism from the image into G and injectivity can be checked on the stalks as we've seen before, which means so on the stalks, this map here clearly is injective, 
but this map here is a bijection, so also this map here is injective. So we have this unique injective morphism from the image into G. And let's call it maybe I. And now we have the next definition we call phi surjective if the morphism i u from the image of phi of u to g of u is surjective for all open sets. Okay, this seems kind of similar to injectivity, but in fact it's not really, because the problem is that we need gvification. So please look at this comment I make now, because this is not equivalent to phi from f of u to g of u subjective for all u open. That's not true. But what is true is that we can check surjectivity at the level of stocks. And let me make a further remark. So this not being true, so this caution thing here is one of the reasons uh, we need cohomology, but uh, cohomology will, if it will be covered, probably it will be much, much later in this video series. Okay, um, as I said above, uh, before, so phi is subjective if and only if the induced maps on the stocks are subjective for all stocks. The proof is not that hard. So first we so again we let H be this pre sheaf which maps just to the image. So we consider basically the same diagram. So we have H, G, and we have the morphism phi. We have the image of phi. We have this map I here. And where we said um, if it's subjective, but we've already shown that it's injective. So in fact, if it's surjective, it's an isomorphism. So we have this isomorphism <coughs> here. And because uh, this is an isomorphism, we just have to check that um, this map. So if we go this way and then here, so we can so we can also go this way. That this map uh, is subjective on the level of stalks. Okay, but uh, then also this map here induces a bijection uh, on on the stalks. So what we have is that phi x is surjective onto, uh, let me see. so we want it phi x is surjective, okay, and it's 
let's see, we have that fires. Subjective, so this is an isomorphism, which means that we have this uh, phi x subjective onto hx, and then so that's uh, basically by definition, and then phi x is also subjective onto by this by Jackson from H to the stiefification onto here. So actually we don't need this uh, arrow here. And then this is an uh, isomorphism and we've seen that bijectivity can also be checked at the level of stocks. So that proves the first part. And for the second part, we basically draw the same diagram again. So we have F, we have H, we have G, we have phi, and we have the image. And what we have to do is to prove that this I is surjective. So let's see you why this is the case. Well, we go here and now this phi x is subjective but we can also go then this way which means that phi x is subjective for all x and x and it's also injective so that's important because that means that it's bijective and this now means that IU is bijective for all, uh, oops, for all open sets U. And therefore, this IU is an isomorphism. And in, therefore, also surjective. Okay, so just to summarize, if I haven't made it clear enough before, we can check um, injectivity and bijectivity both at the level of stalks and also at the level of uh, sections. So sections, uh, where do we have it? Let me see. This is exactly this statement. So we can check it at the level of stalks and at the level of sections. And search activity we can just check at the level of stalks. We can somehow also check it at the level of sections if we uh, want to work with stiefification, but normally we normally we just uh, work with the stocks. And now to show you that um, for search activity we can't look at the level of um, of sections, we consider the following sequence. Namely, we have um, a sequence where this sheaf are the holomorphic functions on C minus the origin. Then we take the exponential, we multiply with 2 pi i, but basically it's the exponential. Oops, then we have um, the same thing, just that we have non-zero functions and it goes to zero. So just to see the so as we've mentioned, we can check exactness at the level of stocks. So in general, we can check exactness at the level of stocks. We could also do it with the image sheaf, which is a sheafification of a pre-sheaf and the kernel sheaf, but normally we would do it 
with stocks. <clears throat> okay, so, um, well, let's first look at the first uh, first part that it's uh, so exactness. Basically, that the image of this map is the kernel of this map. So the kernel of e to the two pi i is just the holomorphic functions which satisfy that e to the 2 pi i f is equal to 1 because here we have um, non-zero functions and that's just 2 pi i c so the integers uh, not 2 pi i we have multiplied with 2 pi i so it's just the integers okay and you can also um, similarly check that it's exact at the other levels so what this means is um, so for search activity so we need search activity here and then of course one also has to check here but at first for search activity um, we what we need is that locally so if we have locally a function we can write it as the exponential of some function so if we make the neighborhood small enough we can write it as the exponential of some function and that works because um, we can make the neighborhood really small and then we get some connected simply connected domain and everything and then we can just take the logarithm but now if we don't make the neighborhood small enough then we have um so what we now look at is the, so the sequence is exact but the sequence on global sections is not exact what i mean by this is um if we have so zero c and then if we look at the global sections of this so oops just the complex plane minus the origin and then yeah well now i'm running into base problems so again um minus the origin and zero this is not exact it would be exact if we leave out the zero on the right but as it is it is not so how do we see this um let's write let's look at the right hand side so we have um the map the holomorphic function c and here so that's that function is non-zero if we leave out the origin and if it would be exact it would mean that there exists a holomorphic function also um, on the punctured plane that satisfies the following exists so f holomorphic on the punctured plane with e to the f is equal to c so that means so that's the search activity on the right and well then we can just take the derivative so we get f prime e to the f is equal to one but e to the f is just c 
which means that f prime is equal to 1 over c. But that's a contradiction, so how do we see that this is a contradiction? Well, um, f prime has an antiderivative, namely f, so we can take um, the uh, integral over a closed curve of f prime, and it says since it has an antiderivative that's zero, and it's also integral over the closed curve, so around the origin, of course. Um, so just take the unit circle, 1 over c, but that's 2 pi i, which is a contradiction. So that means that we have to check surjectivity at the level of stalks, and it's not the same as surjectivity on the sections. Okay, so that's it for today. Next time we'll calculate the stalks um, for affine schemes, so the stalks at points of affine schemes. Thanks for watching, have a good day, and bye.